Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate the Flex Photoshop action. So this is the first example I'll work with and this is the effect uh, that the action will create for us. I'll zoom in a bit here. Okay, so that's what we're going to be recreating first. Uh, I'll work through about four different examples, just covering slightly different techniques um, just so you get really familiar with how everything works. So let me just show you a few more examples of the effect. Okay, uh, let's close this down. All right, so I've got my photo here, and uh, let me just, I'm just gonna go through a few things now just to check off um, with your Photoshop file just to make sure it's all set up correctly and uh, so that you don't run into any errors. So firstly, uh, look into your layer panel, okay, with the photo you've just opened, and it should look identical to this. Okay, it should say background and have this lock symbol. So for those of you who have opened up a photo and it doesn't look like that, what you need to do is, I'll just delete this for a sec. So I've just opened up my photo, it's called layer one. Okay, so what you need to do is go to layer, new, background from layer, and that just sets it as the background, okay? So the action won't work at all if that step's not done. Um, so it must look identical to that. So still in the layer panel, go to this top right hand corner icon, click on that, um, it's, it's cut off on my screen, but if you click on that and scroll down to panel options, right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is checked. Click OK. All right, next you want to go to image mode. Just make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits channel is selected. Okay, if you're in a different color mode, you're probably going to run into errors. So that's important. Uh, next, go into image size. So you can see the resolution of mine, 2200 by 3200. I built this action for photos, uh, to work best on photos around 2000 to 4500 pixels. So say you have just um, downloaded a photo, a border stock photo, and it's only say 1500 pixels. Uh, what you want to do is just scale it up a bit more. Scale it up into you know, the 2000, anywhere between 2000 to 4000 pixels. Um, you won't lose really any quality, uh, but the, a lot of the details and the effect will look a lot sharper, a lot more crisp. So just scale it up if it's a bit, uh, a bit smaller. Okay, so that's that. So what I need to do now is uh, create a new layer. So we go to layer, new layer. This layer must be called brush, all in lowercase. Okay, the action won't work at all if this step is not done correctly. So all in lowercase, click OK. And so the idea here is we select the brush layer and you can either start brushing over your subject or trace around your subject and you want to fill that in with a color. So if I just hit B on the keyboard, I'll right click, grab a soft brush here. So you can do this two ways. You can, you know, you can start brushing over your subject like this. Okay, and fill them in. Uh, but what I like to do is uh, for photos, like my subject is against quite a textured background here. You know, so I can't just use a magic wand tool and start, uh, whoops, start clicking away. You can see it's going to make a bad selection. So what I like to do is grab the magnetic lasso tool. Okay, and my settings at the top here, width 10, contrast 10, frequency 100, and I just start drawing around him like this. And uh, it'll do a good job of snapping to um, my subject because he's quite contrasted against the background. So I'll just go around like this. Um, I won't bother doing all of him because it's a bit boring to watch. So I'll just open up, I've already got one that I've brushed over, just give me a sec, okay. So there I have my brush layer and I just traced around him and I filled him in with a colour, it doesn't matter what colour you pick, okay. So this action works better if you, you, know, you trace around your subject and um, he's got hard edges rather than you know using a soft brush with, and giving him soft edges, so um, yeah, go for hard edges. Now. What we need to do is load the actions panel. So go to window uh, actions. It'll pop up here. Uh, click on this icon. 
go to load actions, select the Flexer A10 file, and it will pop up here. Next, we need to load the brushes that were included with the download. So if you hit B, okay, that'll activate the brush tool. If you right click anywhere over the canvas, it brings up the brushes panel. So what I need to do is replace all these brushes with the flex brushes, okay? So I go to this little icon here and hit replace brushes and select flex brushes.avr. Okay, so here are the brushes that create a lot of the effects. So the action will not work at all if you do not load the brushes, so that's very important. Now before running the action, uh, just hit B again to activate your brush tool. Always make sure that your brush opacity is at 100% before playing the action. With any any of my effects that, requ that require brushes uh, for it to work, it must be at 100% before you play it. Okay, so it's all ready to go now. Uh, don't worry about this one, oil paint finish. That's, um, you wanna run that action after you've run the flex one. Okay, when you've pretty much finished customizing the design, that's the last one you wanna run. So all you need to do here is uh, what, well, what, what I like to do is 12 open the flex folder and that reveals all the commands so you get this um, scroll bar here so what I like to do is just click play and the action begins to run you can see the scroll bar here going down so it gives me an idea of how much time the action's got to go so I'm just going to let it run uh, it'll take about a minute, minute and a half so I'll just skip forward to the result okay so that's the result that I've got I'm just going to close the actions panel and head on into the layer panel now. So with all my actions, uh, the very first step you want to do is collapse all the folders that are open. Okay, so you can see how um, all the folders are expanded, so I just want to close all them. So a quick way to do that is just hold down Control alt or Command Option on a Mac and next to the Flex folder icon here, just click on that arrow and that just collapses everything, so it's, it's a bit neater. Uh, so this is the flex folder, it's got all the effects inside of it, so if I turn it off you can see the original photo and the result. So if you want to run the action again, <coughs> excuse me, just delete the flex folder and I've left the brush light up the top here so you can run the action again. I generally like to run the action a couple times because these textures um, and all these shapes here are randomised every time. So you might get a better result if you run the action again. Maybe just save out each Photoshop file as you go and then just compare maybe a couple at the end. All right, so let's go inside the folder now and I'll just work down from the top top to bottom and I'll explain to you what all of these layers do and then we'll go into a few more examples and just get into you know customizing them and I'll show you like some quick workflows to get to, to adjust the look. So this, <coughs> this layer here, overall exposure, don't really need to do much here. If you just turn it on and off, you can see it just balances out the uh, the darker tones a bit, a bit more. But if you can go inside here, just double click on it. You, know, you can play around with these handles here. You can play around with the exposure. Uh, you can make it a bit brighter if you want. Uh, offset. You know, you don't. And you only have to move these sliders just a fraction from to have quite a strong effect. So I just prefer to use. Um, the exposure adjustment layer to adjust brightness and contrast. I think uh, just works really well. Uh, this one here is another contrast layer. Okay, uh, I've got in brackets here opacity, overall contrast opacity. So what you want to do here is just adjust this layer through its opacity. So currently it's at 30%. So if I click and hold on that word opacity and drag to left and right, all I'm doing is I'm just adjusting the opacity of that layer. So by default it's at 30%, so you can crank that down to zero. Uh, your design might suit with no contrast, or you can crank it to 100, it might look a bit better. But just uh, by default it is at 30. <coughs> this layer here, randomized colors, if you want a quick preview of um, a color change here, so we've got these green cyan tones. If I um, double click on this layer, you can drag around this hue slider here, and it'll give you a quick preview of some other colors, uh, but I recommend changing the colors um, in the shapes folder, which I'll get to in a second. That is just a quick, just a quick way to um, check out some different colors. This layer here, color overlay. If you want to just add a, f a, a subtle fill, color fill over the, over the design, just turn that layer on. If you want to change the color, just double click on the box and you know just grab a new color. Okay. 
simple as that. <coughs> now, this layer here, uh, I try to include this layer now with all my actions. It's called Reveal Normal Photo, and I've got in brackets here Brush Mask. Basically, it's a way of um, bringing back the original detail in your photo, um, and it'll override all the effects. So, say, say for example, um, I want to clear up his face a bit. I want to um, remove a lot of these effects and sort of revert back to the original look of the photo a bit in his face. So what you want to do is select the mask, okay? So currently if I turn this light on and off it does nothing. It's because this mask is black, it's hiding everything. If I just hold down con uh, Control I or Command I, that'll invert the mask, okay? So now it's visible. And all it is, it's just our normal photo, it's put above um, all the other effects, okay? So wherever we brush, I'll just invert that mask again. Whenever we brush white onto this mask, it's going to override everything else. So if I just hit B uh, and make sure white is my active color, and I start brushing away, it's just going to reveal our normal photo. So you know you can get a bit creative here. You can you can brush in patches and go between the original photo and then to like that um, the look of the action, which can look pretty cool. Uh, but it's just a good way that you know to clear up some details, um, you know, particularly in your subject's face if it's a bit messy. So shapes, if I turn this folder off, they are all the glowing shapes that generate. So if you just want, um, so it's offset. If you just want, you know, a black and white design with no glowing shapes, just turn that folder off. Okay, very simple. Now, if you've um, run the action and there are shapes that have been generated over your subject's face. Nine times out of 10, if you're running this action on people as your subjects, these shapes are gonna be created over their face. It might create over their eyes, nose and mouth, which will distort the face. So one of the very first things I like to do is just jump to the mask on this folder here and start brushing black, okay? Because we wanna hide what's in this folder. So we brush black. So if I start brushing away, you can see it's just hiding those shapes. So I'm just going to jump straight to it, even though I like that little bit of glow on his nose there, I'm just going to, just for the sake of an example, I'm just going to brush over his face, so now the shapes are gone. Okay, so you've got to remember that step, um, which is very important for um, for people as your subject. <clears throat> so we'll go inside the shapes folder here, and we've got a, a couple of different layers here, it's a very simple setup, we've got the ones in purple are the shapes, we've got one, two, three, I haven't named that properly, but three, four, five, okay. And if you want to change the colors, it's very simple. We've got these two adjustment layers here. Uh, change shapes one color, change shapes three color. So the one with the glow is this one here. I've got in brackets, has glow. So if you turn it on and off, you can see it's that. So if you want to change the color, you just double click on this adjustment layer, okay? And you just start dragging this handle around and you can change the color of just that, um, just those set of shapes. Okay, and you can play around with the, um, the saturation and also the brightness as well. So if you want more of a white glow, you can adjust the brightness, or sorry, the lightness there. So what I like to do is, uh, so we're gonna try to work towards this example here. So we wanna change these colors to green. So what I will do is just drag this slider here until we get to a green, which is about there. Now the other one is this one here, so you just click on that and I can drag this this one here, just like that, okay. Uh, I might need to change this one a bit more, I think that's pretty good. Now another little thing I like to do here is I select the shapes folder, okay, and I hit Control or Command J. And what that does, it just duplicates the entire folder. So you can see now as I turn it on and off, how it's just made it pop a lot more. Okay, so it's basically stacking all the all the effects on top of each other again. Okay, so it's adding a lot more density um, to it. So if you want to boost um, boost the intensity of the shapes, just duplicate it. And what I also like to experiment with is I'll duplicate it again, Control Command J, and I will flatten the folder onto one layer. So Control E or Command E. So now all the effects are flattened onto one layer here. Okay. <coughs> so you can you know you can experiment with you know offsetting these shapes a bit. And uh, what I could do here is select the mask. I could fill it all black. 
So if I hold down, if you want to fill something with the foreground color, which is black, so this is my foreground color. So I want to fill this mask in black, so I just hold down Alt Delete or Option, oh sorry, Alt, Alt Backspace or Option Backspace, do that. And so what I've done, I've hidden it. So what I can do now is just start brushing white to reveal some of those shapes, you know. So that was pretty cool. Um, but let me just do that again. I'm just going to select the shapes. I'm going to hit Control J, Control E. And yeah, what I like to do is set this blend mode to add. Okay, and sometimes it can create a really cool effect. It brings out the whites a lot more. So as I turn it on and off, you can see that. And you know, I generally like to control this through the mask again. So I just fill this um, black. And a little a little tip: what I like to do if um, because everything's hidden, I want a quick preview again of where. Um, what that layer does, okay, when it's not in. So I'll just hold down shift and I'll click on that mask, okay? And as I just keep clicking on it, you can see just the before and after. So this way I can get a quick preview of areas where it looks kind of cool. So this white area here, I might want to brush that in, maybe down here as well. So I'll just grab my white brush, okay? To flip um, between the foreground and background colors here, just hit X. So now white is my active color. So I can just brush away, okay, and I hold down shift to preview, to preview it again, so, but I think that's looking good, so I'll keep it at that. Now also in this example, <clears throat> you can see these, these large blurred out shapes, okay, so I'll show you how to do that. Again, what we want to do is select the, either one of these folders, hit control or command J to duplicate it. Control E to flatten it. And now what I'm going to do is just set this blend mode to add again. And I'm going to zoom out. Control minus or command minus. Now I'm going to hit Control or command T, which is going to scale it. So you can see it's put this box around um, <clears throat> our shapes. So now if I just grab these corners, if I hold down Shift Alt or Shift Option, it will scale it up. So now, and I can rotate it around. Now I can sort of start plotting where I might want to add some of these shapes. So at the moment, I don't want these shapes to, you know, I don't want all of what I see here. I'm just looking at sections. So I'm just looking at this right hand side here, okay, around, around his back. And I'm just rotating this around and, you know, I'm, I'm liking these lines here that run up through his back. So what I'm gonna do is just hit enter to confirm that. And again, I'm going to use the mask to brush away details that I don't want. So I'm going to select the mask, hit X to flip between foreground and background color, hit B, grab my brush. I'm going to start brushing black. Okay, uh, don't mind this little bit here. I'm going to get rid of all this. Okay, I might get rid of this bit. Uh, actually, I'll get rid of that for a sec. Now, uh, what I want to do is just blur this out a bit, okay, so just go to filter, blur, noise and blur, and you know, just add a little bit, okay, now what I want to do is, I'm going to zoom out again, I'm going to duplicate this layer again, so I'm just going to hold down alt or option and drag up on that layer, that creates copy, um, I'm just going to hold down shift to disable this mask and click on it, so now I get a, uh, full preview of the layer again. So I'm going to move this around. Um, I'm going to hit Control T. I'm going to rotate it. Uh, you know, now might, I'm just looking at this corner here. Maybe I just want this little bit down the bottom here, so I'll hit Enter. And zoom in. And I want to, again, use the mask to brush away um, these details. So I'm just going to fill this mask in black. And I'm going to brush white now to reveal this little bit. Okay. Um, and maybe we'll do it one more time. So let's zoom out. And it's going to move this up to this corner. Maybe 
Maybe I just want to use this little bit here. Use this mask. I'm going to fill it black. And brush white. Okay, that'll do. Uh, and again, you can experiment with you know, the blend modes. You could um, start up from the top here and scroll down. Uh, you can see, oops, my shift select all these. So you get different effects as I'm just scrolling down through the blend modes here. I don't mind that, so I might just keep it at overlay actually uh, for this. So let's keep going. Uh, down to this layer here. Use original photo color. So if you want to overlay the original colors um, of your photo of, of the design, just turn that on. Now I've lowered the opacity a lot, so uh, it's only at 30%. So if I crank that up to 100, you can see now I've got the original colors of our photo coming through. So just keep in mind that's quite low <coughs> uh, by default. Uh, paint drips, so if we go inside this folder here, we've got seven different drips and they are generated randomly over the background here. So you can grab them, move them around, okay, um, you can flip them horizontal. Uh, oh, so just hit control T, and rotate them, uh, but I like to just reposition them where I want. So I can move them down there, I'll just go down to the layers here move them around. You can also, you know, duplicate them, create more. So I'll just hold down Alt or Option, drag down, make a copy. Uh, you know, move it over there, I can scale this down. Also like to change, experiment with blend modes as well. Currently it's a soft light. Turn it to overlay, it's a bit more prominent. <coughs> okay, so I'll just... Uh, move that one there, I'm going to rotate it a bit. Also, if you hold down Alt or Option just anywhere over the canvas and drag, that will also make a copy. So I've just made a copy of that. I can move that down here. Uh, flip horizontal, edit transform, flip horizontal. Scale it. Alright, move that here. Okay, so that's the page rips. Pretty simple. Line textures, uh, if you turn that on and off, uh, I'll just zoom in a bit here so you can see that. So you can see these lines, you've got these vertical white lines and you've got the diagonal dark lines here. That is this folder here. Okay, so you can go inside and turn these off one by one. Um, experiment how with how that affects your design. Okay, you can also lower the intensity down just through the folder opacity. It's at 100%. So to quickly adjust the opacity of a folder, just hit the numbers on your keyboard. So if I just hit 5, it's going to lower that from um, 100 to 50. If it's 0, it's back to 100. So I'm just going to 7, I'm just going to lower that down a bit. Now, all these folders here in orange, <coughs> excuse me, are the paint textures. So you can see all those there. And inside, they've all got the similar setup. You've just got uh, the paint texture layer and then you've got a adjustment layer above it where you can change the color so I can just double click on that box and uh, change the color okay and you can go down through the line here and you know that one's a bit not as prominent the one I like to experiment the most with is this one down the bottom paint texture 8 so if I turn it off you can see it's that large black texture in the background there okay so I like to go inside here and you know experiment with changing the brightness of that texture uh, I'll get around to um, revealing uh, bringing back the original look of his face when the texture is white in the background I'll cover that in a sec so yeah jump inside those folders and play around the textures change the color rotate them duplicate them do whatever uh, so this folder here is the main photo okay so if I turn that off all you're left with is the outlines and the shapes which is a cool effect in itself so um, you know you can work with that start off with that now the photo edges I'll come back to the photo for in a sec photo edges are those lines okay and what I like to do when I run the action for the, um, 
when the action is just finished, I quickly jump down to this folder here and just turn off the uh, photo edges. So I like to get a quick preview to see if the design looks better with the photo edges off. Okay. Or in some areas it might look really good, in other areas you don't want it. So again, just use the mask to brush away any details that you don't want. So let's go inside the photo folder. And the way I've set this up is I've broken our subject down into shadows and three sets of highlights. So I'm just going to turn off all these, uh, turn these all off for a set. Okay, and so down the bottom here, I've got shadows. So if I turn this on, all that's doing is revealing the shadows in our subject, okay? Now if I turn this one on, it's gonna bring in the highlights. And then these ones here are uh, to bring in more of the subtle details in the highlights, just sort of sharpens it up a bit. So the reason why I've done this is that you can control, you know, things like the opacity and the blend mode separately. So I can adjust, you know, the opacity of the shadows if I wanted to, okay? I can adjust the blend mode, I can like switch that to overlay, be a bit dark, I'll go through all the blend modes there to experiment with what that does. Highlights again, it's at 60% by default, I can turn it to 100, okay, or no highlights. Uh, I might actually turn this up a bit for this design. Sharp highlights, I generally like to leave. Now another thing I like to check out is on the shadows layer here, <clears throat> you can see how around a subject there's a subtle kind of drop shadow. Okay, that's just to help to that's just to help um, help sort of bring out our subject a bit more if, if the details get lost in the background textures a bit. But sometimes um, I like to turn that off. So if you just twirl open this arrow here next to this FX symbol, you can see here we've got the outer glow. So if you just turn, just click on the eye for the effects, that will turn it off. So you can clearly see what's, what that's doing now. So quickly jump to that um, layer and turn off the effects and you know ask yourself, does my design look better with it off? This design, uh, I might actually just keep it off. Okay. And what I might experiment with is just, I might turn off the shadows to get a preview of, I'm just looking around the design and seeing if any areas look better um, with the shadows off, okay, just for effect. So what I can do, I'll grab my black brush and I can just start removing some of the shadows, okay. I can do the same for highlights, but I'll, but I'll just leave that how it is. So that's an important folder, uh, the photo one. Okay, so I've gone through all those, we'll keep going. So this layer here, soft background texture, okay, and I'll Again, I've got in brackets opacity. I'm just, whenever I've got a layer with um, a brushing opacity in brackets, I'm just reminding you to experiment with that layer to its opacity. So that's at, it's at 10% at the moment. And if I crank that to, or I just turn that up, you can see it's a texture that runs through the background. It's just to add some really subtle texture uh, in the background there. So you can play around with the opacity of that layer. Uh, Thin yet, I'll just zoom out a bit. If I turn that on and off, that just adds um, some darkness around the edges of your design. So you can turn that on and off, um, see how that affects things. Uh, the way I've designed this is that these textures um, change a lot with light. So you can see, if you look at this area here above his head, as I turn this on and off, you can see how the textures change. So, and this layer here, which I'll get to in a second, is where we can rotate the light. So you can see at the moment it's coming from the left side. We can actually rotate that in any direction, which will create a whole new effect. So I'll get to that in a set. So that's been yet. Now this layer here, okay, it's similar to this one here. So we've got reveal normal photo, which is just our you know untouched normal photo. And this one in the bottom here is reveal stylized photo. And I've got, got a bracket bus brush mask. So the way I like to use this layer is say I don't want, um, or say I find the action and um, my subject's face has got all these white textures running through it. And maybe I want to, you know, I want to keep this original look here in his face, but I don't want all these textures. So what you do is use this layer here. So again, I'll select the mask. I'm just going to grab a white brush. 
flip that over to white. And now when I start brushing over his face, I'm actually revealing that original look, um, that look of our subject when we had this folder on. Okay? So say if you wanted, you know, white textures. Okay? That's when we can use this layer here to bring out any details that have suddenly just gone missing throughout the textures. So that's a very important one to use because sometimes when you run the action, um, the you know these white textures might run down through the subject's face. So just quickly jump to that layer and start brushing white over the mask, and easy done. Um, but I'm going to make this black again because I preferred it with uh, white. So another quick thing, if you go inside Paint Texture Eight, okay, and you can see this mask here. Now if I just hold down Alt to Option, and click on it, we can go inside the mask and take a look. So basically, I filled our subject in here just with a bit of grey. So basically, I'm not letting all this texture completely pass through our subject. It's just only a little bit. So if you double click on this mask, you've got this density handle here. You can play around with that. So if I bring it to zero, the texture's gonna run completely through the subject. If I bring it to 100, it's going to stop the texture from running through. So you can play around um, with that. So I might just Put it out there. So yeah, any masks that you see um, that have yeah, any masks that you can see that I've tried to um, block out the texture from entering, you can yeah just play around with these density handles, and that will um, change things up. So I might just lower this down a bit. That's pretty good. <coughs> Okay, so we're up to this one here. This one's called texture backing. I'll come back to this one for in a sec. Okay, I'll go to this layer here. So this layer you definitely want to play around with, and it's another layer I like to jump to almost immediately. It's called light, and I've got in brackets here adjust the angle setting. So if I turn this off, okay, all our light is gone, and we fall onto a dark background. Now you might like the dark background, okay? I think it's a pretty cool effect on its own. But just by default, I've got this light source. And if you want to adjust the angle, just double click on this box. And you've got this gradient fill window here. Now what you want to do is just play around with the angle. So as I start clicking around, the light source completely changes. Okay? So... Uh, maybe I'll... Just keep the light where it was. And other things you can play around with here is the style. <clears throat> okay, so if you just click on this drop down menu, you can change the style to like radial. So now the light is going to emit from the center of our design. And you can play around with the scale. Okay. Alright, so, and you can play around with all those. Uh, yeah. So. Definitely playing with that one. So this one here is the background color. So say so I just turn off the light for a second. I can just double click in this box and change the color of the background. All right. Now, uh, if I send the now this layer here, texture backing for dark background color. So I've got a dark background color here, and what this layer can do, if you turn it on. Okay, it can bring back a lot of the original texture in the background, but you don't want to, you don't have to use it at 100%. So I can just drag this passage down to zero and just bring up a little bit. So it starts to bring back uh, a lot more detail in the background there. Okay, so I'm going to experiment with that one if you're using a darker background color. Uh, okay, so that's uh, pretty much all, what all the layers do. Now, I've also included this action here. I've included this with a couple of actions now. Um, it's just called Oil Paint Finish. So when you've you know played around with all the layers and you're happy um, with what you're seeing, you can smooth things over a bit by adding this action here. Okay, and it only works on CS6, CS6 and above. And all you need to do is just select it, click play, and it'll just take a couple of seconds. Okay, so what it's done, I'm just going to collapse all these folders. Right at the top here, it has created a folder called Oil Paint Finish. Now, if I turn that on and off, 
if you just look closely, you can see how it smooths everything over. Okay. And now I really like this effect. It's, I think it just helps finish things off. But again, you can control it through the mask. If you want some areas to be smooth and some not, just use the mask. So maybe um, in the background here, I'm just going to remove the effects. So I'm just got my black brush and I'm just brushing into the mask. Maybe I just really want my subject to be smoothed out. And maybe I don't want his face to be smoothed out. So I can select the mask again, the mask selected and brush black. So a lot of that smoothness is gone. Okay. So if you go inside this folder here, it's just two layers. You got the oil paint finish. Okay. And you got this one here, add sharpening. So if I turn that off, you won't really notice too much. It just, just, it just sharpens things up a bit. Okay. Now if I start, you know, moving, um, oops, a photo. Uh, if I start moving, you know, textures around in here, you'll see how it's not really having much an effect. It's because uh, with this action, the oil paint finish, it creates like a, a snapshot of our design and puts it up the top here on one layer. Okay, so basically, um, everything you do down here will not really have much an effect. It's because we've got the design put onto one layer at the top here. So just keep that in mind. So that's why I've just called it oil paint finish. So it's an action to run when you're sort of happy with things and then, and then you want to um, experiment with, um, you know, seeing how your design looks with um, oil paint feels applied to it. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, let's now compare this against the original. So I'm just gonna hold down shift. I'm just gonna group all this. Okay, so there's our original. And there's the action. Okay. Actually, one more, another thing I'll cover here. Uh, if I go down to, right down to the background color lay here. Uh, say uh, if I turn that off, what it's going to do? It's going to fall back onto our original background here. So you can you can see the floor here. Okay. Um, and the you can see the wall texture there. You can you can also. So what I want to do here is basically I just want this bit of floor here to be revealed. So I can just use the mask here, uh, grab my black brush because I want to hide this layer, and, and I can just brush a little bit around his feet. So now you can see I've just brought in the floor, which is a really subtle detail. Um, just adds a little bit extra. So I experiment with you know brushing away the background color um, to fall onto your original background. Okay, I'm just going to move on to the next example. All right, so I've got to open the next example. And so in this one, uh, we're just going to make some changes and we're going to move towards uh, this kind of look. Okay, so we're going to change up the colors a bit. Uh, I'm going to show you how to add these subtle glows as well. It's really simple to do. So a little bit of work to do is let's zoom in. And uh, I'm going to hold down Control Alt or Command Option and click on the, on the photo arrow here. Collapse all the folders. Now, uh, what I'm going to jump to first, I'm just going to turn off the photo edges layer and I'm going to see if that looks any better with it off. Uh, and I think it does, so I'm just going to turn it off for a set. Uh, now next, uh, what are we going to do? We're going to change these colors of the shapes, okay? So I'm going to go into the shapes folder here and I'm going to jump to the this layer here in green and I'm going to head towards a green again. Uh, I'm grab this color. Okay. Now I'm going to jump to the shapes mask and I'm going to brush away these shapes over his face. So I'm going to grab a black brush, start brushing. I'm trying to do that. I might, might just keep a little bit like that. Uh, I'm going to jump into the, uh, the, where is it? the photo folder and I'm going to jump down to the shadows and turn off the outer glow so I don't think it needs it. I'm also going to turn off the shadows and take a look around. Uh, I'm going to turn on the photo edges for a set. So this looks pretty cool down here, his feet, okay. Um, just I like how it's sort of subtly outlined, you can see a hint of the shadows. Uh, even his arm looks pretty cool here. So what are we going to do here? We need to brush black over our, mar over our shadow mask here because I want to hide it. Okay, I'm just going to turn this off for set. Brush that away. His arms. 
And now I'm going to invert my photo edges uh, mask. That's going to flip it all to black so it just hides it. I'm going to grab my white brush, X to flip to white. And I'm just going to start brushing on where I want those edges to appear. Just like that. And that looks pretty cool. Um, let's jump back here. So I'm, I'm going to now jump into... I'm going to have to move these paint strips around because I want to, uh, even though it looks pretty good how it is, I'm just going to, I might switch that to overlay, kind of looks like it's coming off the basketball a bit, just want to move this down here, um, here, I'll just move it there. Uh, I'm going to flip that horizontal. Okay. Right. Scale this one down a bit. Rotate it. I'm just going to have Alt, hold down Alt to Option and drag, and that'll create a copy. Might move that one up here or something. Ah, oh, that'll do. Looks pretty good. It's going to turn off the line textures folder, see how that affects things. It's it's adding a bit of darkness to his face that I don't like, so I'm just going to select the mask and grab my black brush, brush that away. And I might just lower the overall opacity of this folder to say 60%. Okay. Uh, the paint textures. It's all looking pretty good, but I'm, what, what I'm going to do is jump down to my lighting layer and I'm going to adjust the angle of the light here. Uh, so you can see how, how I'm adjusting the angle of the light here and if you look at the textures as I rotate it, how they all adjust. See that there? So I like it from the top here, but you can see how the textures are now running down through his face. So we jump to that layer here, reveal stylized photo, and just grab a white brush because I want to reveal that layer and start brushing. So that is looking pretty good. I'm just going to brush away a little bit on the background color because that might reveal. Um, zoom out a bit here. What I might do is I'll select the mask here and hit, I'll hit G on the keyboard and that is going to grab the gradient tool. Okay, you can see the gradient tool here. And if I just click up here, I'm just going to click on this preset from black to white. And so to create a smooth blend, um, you know, a smooth transition here between showing the background to, uh, you know, the original background color lay here, I can select the mask. Uh, hit G on the keyboard and just click and drag up so you can see if I go inside the mask it's created a smooth black to white transition so it's um, revealing a bit of the background here which I think is looking pretty good I'm just going to low, lower the opacity of this no I think it looks good okay uh, what else can we do here I'm going to jump to the this shapes layer, I'm just going to control the command J, duplicate it. I'm just going to lower the opacity of this folder down to zero. And I'm going to start dragging up to increase the opacity. Maybe use that at 50%. I'm just going to turn on the re use original photo color to see how that looks. And yeah, I might just keep it off. I like the black and white. Uh, now yeah, what else should we... Okay, so we're going to change this background colour. So, uh, whoops, zoom out. I'm going to jump down here. I'm going to turn off the light and because we're just going to use a light coloured background here. So, like that. That's looking pretty cool. Uh, now, I want to show you how I created these glows, you can see on his foot, on uh, the basketball here, so 
create a new layer right at the top above everything here control shift n or command shift n that'll create a new layer okay so what you want to do is set the blend mode of this layer to screen and grab a color so it's going to grab a bright green here and hit b grab a soft brush i always include a soft brush in the top left hand corner of the brushes so just make sure that's selected now to adjust the size of the brush just use the left and right square brackets so I'm looking for, you know, I can just brush a spot here. Okay, I'm going to brush a bigger spot here. And, you know, maybe a little bit on the, a uh, little bit there. Maybe a little bit here. Okay, and it's all a bit bright at the moment. So I can just grab the opacity of this layer. I'm going to drag that all the way down to zero. And then I'm going to start dragging to the right to increase the opacity. You can see that's... Okay, it's just subtle, but you know, works. And if you hold down, if you hit Control U or Command U, it brings up the hue and saturation window, and you can play around with the hue slider here, and that will just quickly change um, the colors. Give you a quick preview. Okay. So I think that's all looking pretty good. I'm going to run the, I'm going to run the oil paint finish action, which will smooth things over. Okay, so turn that folder on and off. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to brush away over his face a bit. Uh, brush black to hide this folder. Uh, everywhere else looks pretty cool. Uh, what else? What else? Uh, what am I doing? I'm just going to turn this off for a second. And. Uh, I'm just quickly checking out if any other area looks better again with the shadows hidden. But I think that's looking good. I kind of like when I turn this off, I'm looking at his face here, at how the corner of his face sort of disappears into the texture. Okay, so I'm just going to select this mask here and I'm just going to brush black to hide this layer. Just a little bit there, just a really subtle bit of detail. <coughs> okay, so let's compare that against the original. Shift select these, control G. So a massive difference there. Um, you know, this action will save you a lot of time if this is a type of effect you're trying to create. Uh, and one other thing I like to play around with is um, I will create a curves adjustment layer above everything. So just click down here <coughs> uh, and select curves. Okay. And uh, if you click on this drop down menu, you can target different color ranges. So you've got red, green, and blue. So I can go into the reds. And if you start plotting points here and dragging this handle around, you can adjust the colors. So you can target the shadows down here in this, this corner. So if I want to re remove some red from the shadows which will bring out some more green you can see you can see out there or if I want to bring red into the shadows I can bring that up okay and then you got the highlights up the top here so I'm just going to add a little bit of green into the shadows and I might go into the blue channel here and just add a little bit of blue fill into the shadow Green, let's check that out. That'll do. So if I turn that on and off, you can see it's just had a little bit of subtle color difference. Okay, uh, let me move on to the next example. All right, I got the next example open. I've just run the action, and this is what I've got. So if I just turn the, um, I'll just collapse all those folders. If I turn this flex folder off, you see there's the original, and that's the default result that I got. Now, uh, what I want to show in this example is we're going to work a little bit on the lighting. So you can see here how I've got this light coming down through the top here, okay, it's sort of all a bit dark in the background here. Um, so we're going to play around a bit with the lighting in this example and cover um, something new. So if I zoom out a bit and scroll down to the bottom here, uh, we've got our light. 
So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna lower this opacity right down. So um, everything's everything's gone a bit dark. So the idea here is the left left side here, I wanna keep dark, but I wanna get a ray of light happening from the top here, like he's looking into this light. Um, so the way we do that is we select our light layer here and just gonna duplicate it, okay? Now, if we turn that up to 100% for a second, uh, we've just gone back to the original result. But if we double click on this, on this layer here, and what you want to do is change this style to reflected. Okay. Now, if you now if you change the scale, you can see we've got this ray of light. Okay. Um, and one one other thing you want to quickly change here, if you if you click on this gradient box here and go to this, so at the moment we're going from white to transparent, okay? So we've got our white here, and then that's fading to transparent. Uh, but it's not completely transparent, it's got about 30% opacity, so if you just click on this top uh, little icon here, these top icons control the opacity, and the bottom one's the color. So if you, turn, if you click on this one here, it's gonna drag this opacity down to zero. So now we're going from white, you can see the the white light there, then to completely transparent. So as I increase the transparency here, oh sorry, the opacity, we move towards a solid white. So you can see now we're going from white to white. So I'm gonna drag this back to zero. Okay, so we've got our ray of light, click OK. Now I wanna change the angle, but this is where we come into a bit of a dilemma. You see, you know, I'll, let me just get the angle right first. Say I want this angle here, but I want this ray of light to be up higher, okay? Because at the moment it's um, it's just shooting through his body, but I want it up here like he's looking into that light. So I'm just gonna turn down the scale of fraction. Uh, okay, I just hit enter to confirm that. So now if I, you know, say I want to move that light up. So logically you'd think if I select this layer and move it up, it would move, but it's doing nothing. Okay, so what do we do? Very simple, right click on this layer and um, it's chopped off a little bit on the screen, but if you click on rasterize layer here, okay, it now um, gives us the ability to move this layer around. So I can move this up Excuse me. Okay, so we've got our ray of light there. Zoom out a bit. We've got our ray of light. And the cool thing is, is that we've got this mask here, so we can still control, um, you know, where that light appears and how strong it is. So at the moment, I like it, <coughs> how it sort of is stronger up here, but I want it to taper off a bit, the light. So there's a couple ways we can do that. We can just grab a black brush, hit B, make sure black, your active color. And I'm going to change the size of my brush. And I'm just going to brush there. So now it looks like, um, you know, the light's sort of tapering off a bit here. Okay. Um, another way we could do this is, I'm just going to fill this mask in white. Hide it all again. Use the grading tool. Hit G. Black to white. I can just create a, just draw a gradient there. So that's going to fade that off. Okay, something like that. Looking good. Move it up a bit more. Okay, and another simple way to brush light is just create a new layer. Control Shift N or Command Shift N. Hit B. Make sure white is your active color. And you know, I can just draw, oh, sorry, paint white here. Okay, so I've just created a whole heap of light up the top here. And I'm just going to lower the opacity a bit. Okay. Um, if I bring it up to 100, you can see that issue again where the textures are distorting the face. So again, jump to that layer. Grab a white brush because I want to reveal it. Start brushing away. Okay. Um, I'm just going to zoom out. I'm just going to lower that opacity again. It's a bit too strong. 
going to turn off the vignette layer for a sec, see how that looks. Might keep it on. Um, if you double click on the vignette mask here, okay, uh, what's creating, you can see how it's all blurred out on the mask. It's because I've adjusted the feathering amount on that mask. So if you just grab this handle here, start, if I drag all the way to the left, you can see it's just a black border, which I have blurred out. Um, so that's, that's looking pretty good. Uh, I'll turn off the light here. Probably don't need it because we've sort of created our own light source at the top here. Uh, I'm going to turn off, I can see a little bit of outer, that drop shadow around his leg here. Might jump into the photo folder down here. Turn off the outer glow. I'll turn that off. I'm going to turn off the shadows, take a look at that. Um, looks pretty cool up through here, his torso. So I'm just going to brush away a little bit of the shadow here. Um, I'm going to duplicate the shapes folder. Check that out. It's going to lower the opacity down, it's a bit too strong. You know, if you want to. Um, extend the glows a bit more, we want to make it a bit, a bit wider. Um, turn it to 100, hit Control E. And, you know, set that to Add. And then go to Filter, Blur, Noise and Blur. And you can then blur that out even more. Alright. Lower that passive down. Okay. Um, so yeah, simple technique to create your own light sources. Um, so let's compare that against the original. Okay, see a massive difference there. Alright, let me move on to the last example. And in this last example, I'm just going to show you um, how I created this textured effect. It's really simple. Uh, so I'll just get that set up. Alright, so I've got to open the last example. And I'm just going to change a couple of layers here. Uh, because I want to move from that result to this, okay, I want to create this textured look and it's really simple, okay, so all you need to do, uh, well firstly I'm going to collapse all these folders, I'm going to turn off the shapes, don't want any of the shapes, okay, uh, I also don't want this black texture in the background, or all these paint strokes, so I'm going to turn off paint texture 8, okay, next I don't want uh, the outline, so I'm going to turn off photo edges, and lastly, I don't want that outer glow, okay, for coming from our shadows. So remember inside here, down to shadows, turn off the outer glow, okay. And immediately we've just created a completely different look, just by turning off a few layers. And then you can jump down here and play around with the light. So I can rotate this, and as you rotate it around, the textures um, adjust to the lighting, and it just creates a completely different um, result. Uh, you can play around again with the radial light, okay, and scale. Let's go back to linear. So that's all I did to create that uh, that result. Okay, so that's it. Um, just check back on this video. Um, you know, if you need some more, so if you need some tips, okay. But you know, when you run the action and use it a couple of times, um, you realise that you're just adjusting a couple of layers, and you'll get to the point where you know you can get really fast at using it and you can come up with some really cool designs in you know, under 10 minutes. Now, it's really simple so uh, yeah have fun using it and uh, if you're stuck at uh, any point along the way just send me an email and I'll help you out. Alright, thanks.